they've taken them in front of the council, and uh, so we're going to start out at about, uh, like I say, like verse 33, or back to about 32, I guess. To, and the apostle says, and we are his witnesses of these things, so it is also the Holy Ghost whom God hath given to them to, to that obey him. When they heard that, they were cut to the heart and took counsel to slay them. Now, what they couldn't understand, they couldn't override what they were saying because of the, the soundness and also saying that they were eyewitnesses to this thing and couldn't rebut it. But it was true, you know, so it was cutting them to the heart, but it was against what they already believed, you know, in the, in doing the, and what Moses had given back years ago to go by and to the, uh, not only the laws and the, the things that they were supposed to be doing there in the church, this, and uh, but they're fixing it to. Uh, they wanted to do away with these guys. They wanted to, uh, you know, to abuse them or whatever. But there was one man here that stood up and had some common sense. Yeah, a little common sense. Whoa! Don't get too big a hurry. Let's uh, let's look at this thing a little different. You know. So in thirty-three, a uh, thirty-four, he says. Then says. Then stood up, there stood up one in the council of Pharisees named Gamal. Okay, Gamal, okay. A doctor of the law had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. So in other words, wait a minute, let's just give them a little time here. Let's see what, whether it is. So he gives them why that they should do this says, For before these days arose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves, who was slain and all, as many as obeyed him, were scattered and brought to naught. So he's giving them things. He said, Hey, Think about what happened right there. 37 says, After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of the taxing, and drew away many people after him, he also perished and all, even as many as obeyed him, were, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men, and let them alone. For if this counsel, or this work, be of men, it will come to naught. Just like the others, he's saying that, you know, that once this thing goes away, it goes to naught, they'll disperse away, and there's no problems, and we don't have to get involved in that. Which, that makes pretty good sense, don't it? The old boy's butt pretty good larger, sounds like. But, he says, but, in 39, if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Let's happy you be found even to fight against God. Well, you've already seen what God can do when man fights against God. Egypt learned that lesson the hard way. You know? So, that word, hap, H-A-P-L-Y, means by chance that at least by chance you be found even to fight against God. Well, that was something they knew that they didn't want to do. And 40 says, And to help to him they agreed. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. You know, the apostles being full of the Holy Ghost, being commanded to give the great commission to give the word to, to the, the people about Jesus, him dying and paying for the salvation of their souls, you know, 
There was no stopping them because they already said, which do we least start to obey man or to obey, obey God? They're going to obey God because God was the one that gave them the commission, right? He's the one that's in charge. And they know that. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame of this name. You know, Apostle Paul did that also, didn't he? He found himself to be worthy of it, to be punished for the Lord's name. I wonder if it comes our time to be punished in the name of the Lord, but we'd be happy. Just think, if that happens, you know where you're at. You know who you are. You ought to be happy. Your name's written in heaven. Remember that. So it says here in 42, it says, And daily in the temple and in every house they cease not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. You know, that's the thing today when we, we need to live a life to where we don't need to teach it or, or preach it. We need to live it that other people can see it. You know, if other people can see it, it's not do as I say, do as I do, right? That's what we need to do is to tell other people, well, you know, watch it. Do what I do. Go to church, study, read the Bible, you know, don't live out in the world. Don't hang around with the wrong crowd. Don't eat and drink and all that stuff that I shouldn't. Be a man of God. Be a person of God. If you fear God. <clears throat> kind of like that first, he says. You don't want to find yourself to where you're going to be fighting against God. You're going to lose. Okay, chapter 6. Okay. <laughs> <coughs> it says, In those days, when the number of the disciples was multitude, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews, because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. So in other words, nobody was looking after the elders that was in the church. You know, nobody's looking after the elderly people because... Back then, they didn't have welfare and Social Security and, and all this stuff. The church kind of took care of, you know, of the, the, the mothers, the agent mothers and fathers and, you know, and or the children and stuff like that, that of these people. And uh, they would take, you know, the people, I'm going to say uh, a sop or whatever, that was some of their responsibilities in the church is to do these things. It says, okay, it says, the two says, Then the twelve called a multitude of the disciples into them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word God and serve tables. In other words, this is some business that they don't need to get involved in. Uh, these are minor things that you know that. So they come up with this. Uh, the solution here that seemed to fit the bill. It says, Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom ye may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to ministry of the word. So, it says, and the saying pleased the multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of, the Holy, full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and that punk, who? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah Nicholas. Right. So they picked out seven men here they think that are really, that have reached qualifications. That... <clears throat> whom they set before the apostles, and when they had prayed, laid their hands on them. So, 
uh, this Christians that they're talking about was just Jewish speaking, I mean, uh, uh, Greek speaking Jews from foreign countries, from, from other lands and visiting there. And <clears throat> there in 6 it says, they set these uh, apostles before them and they prayed and laid their hands on them. I think what you're looking at here, it is the beginning of the deaconship of the church. Don't you? This is the first time, and by doing this, and laying their hands on them, praying that, uh, that they be filled with the Holy Ghost and do that what is required of the church and, you know, wouldn't be no remorse. That way the apostles could continue on their work. Studying the Word and administering and preaching God's Word. Now, <clears throat> Number eight says, And Stephen, full of power, faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. And said, And there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of Libra time, and the Cretans and the Alexandrians, and of them of that Cilicia and of Asia, disputing against Stephen. Now, disputing means debate or controversy. Uh, they didn't agree with what he was saying because it was against what they believed. And they've, uh, you know, so, and when I read this, I just wondered, who are these people? All these different people that are going to stand there and argue against one man. You know, what he's just saying, you know. So, I go to try to look up all this. Of course, you know, you don't find a lot of this in the Bible. So you got to look back in history files or like what I did, I Googled it. See what, what was being put in there from calling from other people and what the explanations were. <clears throat> now, the labor times composed of freed Roman or Jewish slaves and may also include descendants of such men. A Libra time is someone who lives a life unencumbered by morals. Hmm. In other words, they drank a lot, eat a lot, and live a wild and unrestrained life. Sound like what's going on today, don't it? Oh boy. If someone would call you this, they would disapprove of your morality, in other words. So you're just living a loose life, whatever that. Okay, the Christians, uh, Jews from, what is that, Cyrene? A city of Libya in North Africa between Egypt and Carthage. Also, the Jewish community that lived there consisted of about 100,000 people. And these Christians had a synagogue there in Jerusalem. So, in other words, there was a lot of travel. Most time people would travel from their city, from there, their, up to Jerusalem <coughs> ever so often, and uh, there would be some there most all the time. Alexandrians, Jews living in Alexander that often visited Jerusalem was said at one time to have 10,000 that lived there, which, you know, Alexander was in Egypt. So, and then uh, that, what do you call that? See, uh, Cilicia. Yeah, Cilicia. Is an ancient Roman name for Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. And is mentioned, of course, in Acts and, uh, and uh, Galatians and was the birthplace of St. Paul, the site of early, his early evangelistic missions. So <clears throat> these people that are budding or di disputing what Stephen is saying is from all the way around, you know, a long way off, but there's a, a group there that's inside Jerusalem. Now, uh, here are just putting just what Stephen is trying to tell them about Jesus 
and about salvation, about repentance and stuff. So then number 11, it says, Then they, stubborn men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemy words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. <laughs> Here we go again, right? Yeah. Oh, I missed that one, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah, to, to believe what they do. To make. Resist means to oppose, withstand, or hinder. They couldn't hinder him from what he was saying. They couldn't oppose it because they really didn't, couldn't really un have nothing to, to go against him with. Yeah, All right. Okay. <clears throat> so it says they set up false witnesses, which said, "This man ceased not to speak blasphemy words against this holy place and the law." For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the and shall change the custom which Moses delivered us. Okay. So when you look at that it says when Jesus was destroyed this place, if we go back and look at Saint John chapter two, starting at verse thirteen. Okay. It says, And Jesus and the Jews Passover was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changers of money sitting. And when he had made a scourge of small cord, he drove them all out of the temple, and the sheep and the oxen, and poured out the changers' money, and overthrew the table, and said unto them that so does, Take these things hence, make not my father's house a house of merchandise. And his disciples remembered that which is written, The zeal of thy house hath eaten me. Then answered the Jews, and said unto him, What sign showest thou against us, seeing that thou hast done these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. That's what he was talking about, destroying the temple was the temple of if they would do something with him and it did right they killed him in three days he rose again didn't he and that's what uh stephen was talking about here he was talking about that jesus would rise again in three days you know would come back and he did and the in bur in the first part of acts it doesn't say that the uh, that the disciples was with him. It just says the apostles was with him when he arose, when he ascended up. And of course, when Jesus was around them, like what was it, forty days there, that he was around amongst them, appeared to a lot of them. <clears throat> and uh, I'm sure that Stephen may have seen him, may have seen him there, and knew it for a fact. But you know, but the disciples, I mean the apostles have witnessed this that he had had risen and they saw him ascend into heaven and uh, you know and the guy the two men that stood by told him that he'd be back so 
But anyway, uh, so that's what Stephen was talking about there. It says, for we have heard him say, this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place and shall change the custom. And he has changed what Moses has said, you know, delivered us. He's changing it from, from the law to grace. Salvation by grace and not by law. So what the law couldn't do, God did through, the, through his grace and mercy upon mankind. So he is changing. And he did it through Jesus Christ. Because he paid the price. And no, shortly after what we're, where we're at here now in our, a few years on later, there was a second destruction of the Jerusalem, which was in the 70 CE. Now, CE is supposedly the same as AD, but <clears throat> CE means common error. It is a secular equivalent of AD, which means in the year of our Lord in Latin. And I think the way I, the way I see this thing is that <clears throat> this 70 CE begins the day that Christ was born, the year that Christ was born, not the year that he died. Because I was talking to Brother Jimmy about that as times whenever uh, 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 from the time of the, where Jesus went up you know, just went up in the time that he was with them after he was killed, uh, uh, crucified there, that from the time he arose 40 days, you know, after his crucifixion, you know, he went, descended into heaven, that uh, they, the, the years of time between that time to what the disciples were, you know, started their, uh, uh, what you want to call their ministry. So, <clears throat> the time don't frame don't work out to seventy. I mean, to, to this time, from what we give it. Birth. Yeah. Yeah. So what what we use is what the birth of Christ or from the death. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And in 15 it says, And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. <clears throat> so what would you consider to be, when you look upon somebody, as the face of an angel? You know, have you ever noticed every picture that's been painted of an angel? A lot of them, the children, the most pure, I could say, the most pure look of innocence that there is. But you know, if you look at where you see the adult pictures of angels, you can see the same thing. If the artist captures a situation that you're looking at an absence, what I would call, one that had absolutely no sin at all. I mean, it's just a, pure, a, a, a picture of if totally innocence. And you know, in the book of Revelations, 10, chapter 1, John gives a description here of an angel that he saw come down out of heaven. He says, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. A rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun. Like he said, it shined. And his feet as a pillar of fire. Could you imagine seeing something like that in your presence? Oh, my heart would hold on. I'll get a, you know, that'd be, you should definitely fall on your knees, wouldn't you? Mm. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Chapter 7. <clears throat> then said the high priest, Are these things so? So, right here, Stephen starts to give them a history lesson, don't he? He starts to tell them what he knows. He said, and he, men, and he, and he said, Men, brethren, fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father, Abraham, when he was in Mesopotamia, before he dwelt in Koran, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I will show thee. Then he came out of the land of Chaldeans, and dwelt in Koran, and from hence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein you now dwell. So this is where Abraham came. It's where, where Jerusalem's at today. That's where Abraham came. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, nope, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him as for possession and to his seed after him, when as he yet had no children. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil four hundred years. So, Stephen here is telling about when he come to this land, you know, then he had Isaac. Isaac got Jacob, and Jacob got the 12, 12 uh, what you call them, uh, patriarchs. And they were the 12 tribes of Israel. And they were the ones that went down into Egypt and multiplied and uh, was there for 400 years. To start out, what was he? The 60-some or 70-some people that that uh, came down into the land of Egypt to begin with. And then they multiplied to what was way over a million. Woo My goodness. It says, okay. It said, they took them down and put them into bondage for 400 years. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that, they shall come forth and serve me on this place. So now, talk about the, when the, uh, he's telling about whenever they're going to come out or be taken out into, uh, by Moses, I guess. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision and go and so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him on the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot the twelve patriarchs. So he's given, he's given the council there this history lesson that is what took place to bring them up to the present day time of where he's at, right? And the patriarchs moved with envy and sold Joseph into the Egypt, but God was with him and delivered him out of all his afflictions, and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all of his house. So he's explained here just how things went with, with, with their ancestors. So evidently, Stephen was well read in the scriptures, wasn't he? Well read man. Now there came a drought over all the land of Egypt and Koran and great afflictions, and our fathers found no substance. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out our fathers first. And the second time, and at the second time, Joseph was made known to his brethren, and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. 
then sent Pharaoh, then sent Joseph, and called his father Jacob to him, and all his kindred, three score and fifteen souls. So that's what, seventy-five? Like I say, from seventy-five to, uh, huh? Yeah, it's over a million, four hundred years. It's a long time, isn't it? It's a lot of people. So Jacob went down into Egypt, and he died, he and our fathers. And we were carried over into, what is that? Shaki. And laid in the scripture, and that Abraham bought for some of the money of the sons of Emmer, his father. But when, but when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, till another king arose, which knew not Joseph. Well, I'm going to stop right there <clears throat> for today. <clears throat> now, Stephen is giving these guys, giving this council, uh, like I say, giving them a history lesson, letting them to know that he was a well-educated man in what has happened and what's going on. And he's going to bring them up to date as to where he is and what he's doing and what he's saying. We're going to learn later on in this coming chapter. So next week we'll pick it up there. And uh, Brother Dub, you care to close us out for today?